really what I'm talking about today is a little bit about what additive manufacturing is being used for around the world, when to use it, when not to use it, because not everything should be 3D printed. But I thought before we start, I've got a couple of slides about me and my background. What I do today is product development. So I head up the product development division at Lund University at LT Hall, and we develop products from the concept through the detailed engineering design, manufacturing, getting them out to market. And this is what got me interested first in, well, any tools that allow us to develop better products and getting them to market faster. So first CAD, computer-aided design, was of huge interest. But then natural extension of that, once you've got your CAD model, what do you do with it? And that's where additive manufacturing is a logical extension to get to the level where you can now hit the magic print button and a few hours later you've got the real product to play with to test for. On the left, you see subtractive manufacturing, which is a way of making almost anything today. So if I want to make a bust of my head, I start with a block of marble, hammer, chisel, and I cut away all the marble until I'm left with the head. So we're removing material. This is still the way 95% of things are made today. Not with a hammer and chisel, but with a CNC machine where you're cutting away the material, either directly to make the part or indirectly to make a mold. So if you're injection molding or casting, you start with a block of steel, cut away the material, and you inject plastic into it. Additive manufacturing works the other way around. You start with nothing, with a virtual computer model, slice it up into very thin slices, and then print, hence the term 3D printing, print one slice on top of the next, on top of the next. So layer upon layer upon layer, you build up your part. That's the general concept. So Every company in the world has used additive manufacturing for prototyping, Alpha Laval included, no question about it. But over the last 10 years or so, some of the technologies have gotten good enough where you can start to use them to manufacture the real product to sell to the customer. So we've progressed from that rapid prototyping to rapid manufacturing. And that really changes the way you do a lot of things. It changes the way you innovate. It changes the way you create products and get them to market. So can you use additive manufacturing today as it is? For some applications, absolutely yes. For all applications, absolutely no. And knowing when to use it is probably one of the critical things. When to use it and when it adds value to what it is you're doing. The surface quality of 3D printed parts is relatively rough. The same as Sandcast. In fact, they're better than Sandcast. So I use an engine block as an example. If you cast an engine block, most of the engine block, you don't really care about the surface finish. But where you need engineering tolerances, you'll skim the heads, you'll bore out the pistons, anywhere where you need bearings to press fit, you will post-press this and machine them. So it's important, if you think of additive in the same way, you will not be disappointed. A lot of the newspapers and media says, in the future, everything will be 3D printed. Manufacturing as we know it is dead. And I think that is absolutely not true. I don't think additive will ever replace conventional. It's a complementary technology that has got some advantages, but not everything should be 3D printed. The more geometrically complex it gets, the harder, the more expensive it becomes to manufacture, and at some point it becomes impossible. Additive is literally the opposite way around. The more geometrically complex, the better suited for additive, and if it's a simple part, there's probably better ways of making it. Today, additive manufacturing, you think high value, low volume. Will it ever become a mass manufacturing technology for making cheap disposable products? Probably not. Topology optimization is using mathematics to remove the material that's not doing anything useful. So why not get rid of it and make a lighter product that is more rigid? So that with this bottle opener, for example, if we were going to make it the traditional way, we'd start with a block of, in this case, aluminium. We'd put it on a CNC machine. It would weigh about 10 grams. We'd machine away the shape that's in the middle there. So the final finished product would weigh about 4 grams. In contrast, the topology optimized one, under a gram. 90% weight saving. Any high performance car company is interested in this because high performance cars saving weight means you go faster, you win the race. Light weighting on an airplane means thousands of dollars of fuel you save a year. The next big area, call it engineering advantage, is called mass customization. We mass manufacture them, but every product is custom made for you, the customer. And of course, the biggest area for that is medical. Because our bodies are all different, anything that needs to fit our body benefits from being 3D printed. Hearing aids. 
Some, look at the quantity, 60 million hearing aids 3D printed since 2000. Most of us don't know that they're 3D printed, we don't care that they're 3D printed, we just care that they fit us perfectly. So they put some silicon in your ear, pull it out, laser scan it, materialize one of the software companies' has written software to automatically hollow it out, put in the mounting points for the electronics, and then overnight they'll print 300 or 3000 hearing aids, all custom made for the user. If a product is custom made for you, do you keep it longer? If you do, and we think you do, that means it's more sustainable, because the longer you keep a product, the longer the lifespan of the product, the more sustainable it's going to be. Another big advantage, so we've got complexity for free, mass customization, and now we're talking about part consolidation. It's part of complexity for free, but most products are made up of many, many simple components because simple components are easy to manufacture. So you make 10, 20, 100 simple components, glue them together, weld them together, screw them together to make a complex component. With additive manufacturing, you can take all these simple components and join them together as a single, much more complex component. So one example of that from Airbus. This is just a bracket to hold a hydraulic tank. But you look at the one on the left is the way it's made conventionally, 126 separate parts, screwed, brazed, welded together, compared to only three parts for the one on the right here, um, printed in titanium. So going from 126 to three components. Now, think about that from a logistic point of view. Think about it from a storage point of view. Think about it from an assembly point of view, from a reliability point of view. It starts to have major implications across your supply chain in major ways. How many parts has got Alpha Laval got sitting on shelves on this site? A lot. Now imagine reducing that to a few. You start to think the implications of that. So these are what I would call the engineering advantages of additive manufacturing. Complexity for free, mass customization, part consolidation. If you have an idea for a product, the setup costs for tooling, for CNC machine, for programming the G-code on CNC machine, the Typically, it's such a barrier that it kills the idea before it even goes to market. So with the additive, you can go to market with a product with no setup cost, no tooling cost, and a hugely reduced lead time. Can I make an electric guitar? I designed my first guitar, pulled it out of the machine, assembled it, and I was amazed by how well it played, how different it looked. You know, because of the aesthetics you can achieve with that. So I started a blog about this, printed, this guitar I'd printed saying, look, here's something different in the world of music. I've sold about 60 odd guitars to musicians around the world. Again, a crazy range in terms of all of them from an aesthetic point of view are very complex. Every guitar I make is different. So my version of this one is the only one in the world with King Kong on the Empire State Building grabbing a little airplane. So every guitar I make is custom made for the musician. because you can. <laughs> now again, to hurt your brains, the body, the whole body with all of these moving parts, all the pistons printed in one piece, no assembly required. Comes out of the machine assembled and ready to go. So that's one of the beauties with additive is you can make these moving parts where you can have this entire assembly printed with moving parts, but all comes out of the machine already printed. To me, manufacturing is actually a barrier to creativity. We have industrial machines that cost $100,000 up to several million dollars, and you have desktop 3D printers that cost $300 to $3,000. For testing ideas, for being creative, those are fantastic. And I strongly believe every designer, every engineer should have one of those on his desk. So imagine in the future being able to go back to that pre-industrial revolution supply chain. You know, I'll go to the IKEA in Lund, I'll say, here's my design for my chair that I downloaded and bought. Can you print it for me? Go have a cup of coffee, come back an hour later and my chair is printed or my table is printed for me. Think about that, being able to manufacture on demand, manufacture what you need, when you need it. There's now effort around the world looking at can we use additive manufacturing to make spare parts on demand. So instead of having a warehouse full of spare parts, we make them when we need them. Additive manufacturing, like it's a cool technology. Don't misunderstand me, it is fantastic. It really changes the way you do a lot. What you guys need to do is have a bit of a play with it. And my last sort of announcement is we've just got our first metal machines at Lund University installed about three days ago, uh, three weeks ago. So that little distillery is one of the first parts we printed on that. And that was partially sponsored by Alpha Laval. So you guys have now got a bit of a playground to come and play with and exploit and play with the machines. 
um, both plastic and metal. So sort of an open invitation to you guys who've got ideas, who want to try out ideas for Ala Falaval. The lab is for you guys, there for you guys to have a bit of a explore and playground with.